Chapter 1 Bitch, I need some Henny and a Plan B. Bitch, I need some Henny and a Plan B. That jam was my shit. Them hoes was crazy as fuck for making that song. The lyrics rolled off my tongue so seamlessly. But back to business. Hey, bitch, is you ready or not? I yelled out to my bestie, Kiara. I was ready to get the motherfucking party started. It was just about that time, too. A bitch was dressed in a bedazzling, sparkling silver bustier with a matching thong. Let me tell you something here, bitch. I was looking just like Selena's, getting ready to make some Mexicans itty-bitty bong-bong. Except for tonight, I was about to make a nigga come come Unlike Miss Quintanilla, I wasn't just gonna sing and dance, though. Bitch, I saved that shit for the club. Tonight, I was about to work and twerk this fire-ass pussy saddle between my thick, tatted thighs on this clown. I was gonna have this nigga's fat, lame ass so gone off my pussy, I wasn't just gonna be paid for the night. I was gonna be set up for the rest of my life. So yes, bitch, it was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what the fuck y'all thinking. Oh, so that's the shit she on. She a little nasty ass hoe. Oh, so fucking what? Yeah, I was selling pussy. See, half you busted, broke ass, dumb ass, expired weave wearing, bad bodied ass hoes be selling pussy too. And then y'all don't even be selling it for the right price. Some of you whack ass, dry pussy having hoes be out here selling your pussy for a $5 box from Popeyes and some garbage-ass weed. Bitches out here sucking dirty STD-infected dicks for stems and seeds. And then the other half, you basic bitches, be giving pussy out for free. But not me. Bitch, I ate good and smoked good. I could get any nigga to take me to Red Lobsters or Papa Do's without having a nigga feel like he entitled to get something back from me. Unlike the rest of you silly assholes. Shit. Truth be told, if I wanted to, I could get those same clown-ass niggas to eat my pussy and ass for free. Yep, I could get a nigga to slide his tongue all down my ass like he was looking for a missing winning lotto ticket. So I don't need a nigga for nothing. Nothing. Oh, and before I forget, let me just say that you bitches who just be giving pussy away, y'all some Salvation Army food pantry assholes, giving your pussy away like it's canned collard greens. Got me all the way fucked up. But look, I'ma leave it at this. Cause a pussy asshole could never. Real bitches do what they gotta do. And the only thing that mattered to me at the moment was using these God-gifted gooey guts to make some fuck nigga empty out his pockets and run me my money. So tonight, like every other night, was all about business. No pleasure at all. By the way, my name is Nashana. However, everybody, for the most part, call me Nunu. My stage name is Storm, though. I chose that name because my pussy can get so wet that I'll flood a nigga dick out like Hurricane Harvey. I'm 23 years old. I am straight from Inglewood, the south side of Chicago. But now, I stay out east on 47th Street. I got one son. His name is Darquavius. He's three years old. However, he don't stay with me because my mama was on some fuck shit years ago. So her stupid ass had him taken away from me. His daddy locked up. Yeah, I knew I could take my ass down somewhere and get a real job. But a real ass job was never for me. I needed fast money. Everybody told me growing up I could dance, so right after high school, I took my sexy ass down to the factory, a gentleman's club on 119th. I auditioned and started working that night. I've been doing that since I got out of high school. Now, don't get me wrong. The money was good for the most part, but hey, when a bitch needs some extra cash, like I said, I was more than willing to sell some ass. Anyways, I had just finished taking a shower. Now I was staring my fine-ass self in this motel's bathroom mirror, swiftly finishing my makeup. A pink lace front bob wig I bought just a day ago adorned my head, pairing well with my sugar cookie color face. Kiara, too, was finishing getting ready. Tonight. We was finna mess with this nigga named Daryl. He was this fat-ass, lame-ass nigga from out west who was a low-key dope boy. That was what he told me. I met his greasy-looking ass some time ago at the club. For the last month or so, 
He had been trying his hardest to link up with me. I was reluctant at first. Although the nigga looked like he had Vienna sausage for a dick, I was so turned off by his size. The nigga had titties bigger than me. Oh, my son. I swear, this nigga had titties the size of cantaloupe sitting on his chest. Nigga had a belly so big, you would have thought his ass was pregnant with triplets. Every time I'd see him in the club, my skin crawled. But last week, I finally caved. When that fat, ugly-ass nigga told me he'd pay me and another girl five stacks to fuck his brains out, I didn't even hesitate to accept his offer. Five stacks? Really? I immediately told Kiara about his deal. And of course, her ass quickly agreed to come along with me. Shit, her ass had better, too. She do got five kids from four different niggas, and none of them were on child support. I don't know why bitches be doing that to themselves. Don't get it twisted, though. I really wasn't hurting for money, per se. Dancing at the factory was good money. That was when the dope boys and ballers came through. But when they didn't, only old-ass niggas stingy with their pension and social security checks came through. And those old niggas always gave a fucking attitude when they had to pay $20 just for a lap dance. Daryl just texted me not too long ago and said that he was going to be here within 15 minutes. I glanced down at my phone and saw that it was nearly midnight. We had five minutes left to get ready. Bitch, I have been ready. The fuck is you doing? Kiara shouted back. I could see from the motel room's mirror she was sitting on the bed watching TV. Good, I'm just about done, I replied. We had no time to spare. We had to make sure everything was perfect. Our outfits, makeup, wigs. Bitch, we even took our asses to a Korean spa up in the burbs to get them yoni steams. Shit, you always gotta make sure your pussy is right and tight. Them steams will snap your shit back into place like you 12 all over again. Daryl told us to meet him at the Fitzgerald Suites which was this raggedy-ass motel on 79th Street. He told me to go ahead and get a room and he'd pay me back. I didn't mind, though. It only cost $50 a night to stay here because this place was nasty as fuck. Spiderwebs hung in the corners. I swear I could hear the sound of roaches and rats climbing within the walls. These were the other reasons why I was pressed as fuck to get this shit over with ASAP. This place was the fucking pits. The room smelled like mold. New ports, mothballs, and unwashed ass. The room's old-ass TV barely worked. When we first got to the room, Kiara told me it could only pick up like three channels. Can you believe that it still had antennas like it was 1991 or some shit? That thing was so big and bulky. It kind of reminded me of the old-ass TV my grandma had in her house. She used to watch her faves like In the Heat of the Night, Family Feud, and other soaps on that clunky big-ass shit while she smoked squares and sip ripple. And now, ironically, Steve Harvey's ugly ass was actually blaring on the motel's TV. Kiara was watching him yap off about some contestants' answers on Family Feud. Side note, why that nigga's lips look like that? I bet he could eat a mean pussy, though and probably eat it from the back. The mustache says it all. Anyways...